Podcast on Podcast. My name is Kelly and I'm coming to you from the beautiful east coast of Canada. Today is November 20th, 2020. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Celtic Cast On. If it's your first time to the podcast, welcome. Thanks for stopping by and checking me out. And if you're a returning viewer um, or regular or occasional, thanks for stopping by again. Today I have a quick little episode to share with you some of my knitting um, progress, FOs, whips, and things that I've been working on. So let's get right to it. All right, so I'm gonna show you my FOs first. And as you can see, I'm wearing one. This is my Ridgely Pulley by Bonnie Marie Burns. This is the sweater that I've had on needles, the needles for a very long time, and I'm so glad um, to have it finally off. So I'm gonna stand up and I'll show you what it looks like. So if you may remember that when I knit this sweater, um, it, the original pattern is a bell shape, so it kind of comes out from the armpits and, and makes kind of like an A for A-line a shape. Um, but when I tried it on, I had finished the body and I tried it on and it wasn't me. It kind of made me look like I was wearing a potato sack. So I had ripped back to the armpits and uh, decided that I'd do less increases to make it more um, of a straighter shape. And it seems to have worked out well. So although I had finished the body, um, before I ripped back the body, I had part of an arm finished because I had tried on the body with one arm thinking that it would be good, but it ended up not being. Um, so when I finished the body, I went back to the, to the arms and I knit a sleeve. And when I tried it on after that first sleeve, I realized that the sleeve was going to be too big as well. So I ripped the sleeve back to the armpits and cast on half as many stitches as I was supposed to under the arms and then just knit as the pattern. And that worked out perfectly. Um, I then promptly put the sweater down and worked on something else. And when I picked it back up, I forgot that I needed to do less stitches for the underarm and I knit the entire sleeve with the pattern called four stitches. So I had to rip that one back and re-knit it again. Um, so it took me three times to knit this sweater. I am so glad that I'm finally finished it and I'm so glad that it turned out the way it did because I do love it. Um, I've already worn it to work and it just, it's perfect. Exactly what I wanted. So this um, sweater is knit with Classic Elite Sky Tweed. Uh, this yarn is discontinued, but I've had it in my stash for a while, and I have knit another um, sweater out of the same yarn, but in an orange, a burnt orange color that I love. So I knew that I needed to make something wearable with this one. So that's my first FO. I have a few more FOs to show you, and I guess we'll start with this one. Now this is an FO that you haven't actually ever seen as a whip. Um, I had an opportunity to test knit these and I'll show you my finished Autumn Fern socks. So these are the Autumn Fern socks and they are by Hannah of Yarnia Designs. Now Hannah had talked about these on her podcast and I saw her knitting um, her first sample and when I saw them I just knew that I wanted to test knit them. So I was ready at the button um, for when she put out the test call because I knew they were just going to be something I'd want to knit and then something I'd want to wear. Uh, these are knit with the Uncommon Thread Lush Twist, which is an MCN base. That's not something I would normally choose um, to knit into socks, but the color was just screaming Autumn Fern socks to me and I knew I just, nothing else in my stash was kind of calling out like this one, so I just went for it. So I probably have an update on how well these wear. Um, if you have been around Celtic Cast On for a while, you'll know I'm hard on my socks. I wear them every day, um, in boots, in without shoes on. I just, I wear them all the time, just like regular socks. Um, so I don't treat them daintily. Um, so we'll see how that goes. 
So um, uncom the Uncommon Thread and the cream color is Patton's Croy in Muslin. That's my go-to cream color. Uh, I knit these on 2.25 needles, except for where you see color work. So I would change to a 2.5 needle here and here just before the toe. Everything else is knit on 2.25s. And they fit perfectly. So that's my second FO. My next FO is another pair of socks. I think it's been the year of socks for me this year. Um, the next pair is also a test knit, so you have never seen these ones before either, because I knit both of these pairs uh, since I podcast last. You just grab them on the blockers here and then I'll be able to show you. <clears throat> so this is another pair. You may remember my last podcast or the podcast before I test knit a pair of socks for Bloom and Create, who is Emma. And I saw these come up on her feed and I asked if I could test knit these ones too. So these are the soft morning socks. Um, Yep, soft morning socks. They are knit with the Plucky Knitter, another MC Hen base. <laughs> um, again, this color was calling to me. I've had it in my stash for a long time, so I just decided to throw caution to the wind and knit with it. Um, so colorway cream tea by the Plucky Knitter, and this is also another Patton's Croy in the navy. I love the navy and the orange together. I think they look so pretty. So if you look at um, Emma's pattern page, my socks might look a little different, and that's because I made a boo-boo. <laughs> um, I did check with Emma after I realized that I'd made a mistake, and she said she was fine with it just to keep on going. So you'll notice where the color work starts here. Um, you can see a clear band of color work. On Emma's socks, it does not look like that. Um, I have these two colors reversed by accident, so what everything you see that's navy should actually be in the orange color. So it kind of just fades into these circles, whereas mine looks like a band of color work. So you can really knit them either way. Um, Emma's is a more softer approach, and this is a more here's the color work approach. So totally up to you. Both look really pretty. But again, if you do see Emma's pattern, that's why these look a little different. So you will um, notice a difference. I did accidentally switch the two colors and I, it was because I didn't look at the chart key. I just assumed, and I shouldn't assume when I'm test knitting a pattern. So those are my other FO that I have. I have one more FO to show you, and I, it wasn't an FO until last night, so I'm happy to be able to show you my last FO. Can you guess what it is? It's another pair of socks. <laughs> socks are just really easy and portable, right? You can knit on them anywhere, especially if they're a plain pair of socks. You can kind of just pick up and go. So this is the pair that you will see have seen before that I was working on. Um, I had called these my back to school socks because I was working on them. I took them to school and was working on them during my breaks. So these are the back to school socks. Um, this is just my plain um, sock pattern. I did a twisted rib cuff, um, 64 stitches, and he'll flap and guess it. This uh, yarn is the Arnie and Carlos uh, line from Regia, and it's the fall night colorway. I just love this colorway. Orange, red, blue, gray. It's a popular one, so you will have seen it around. So that's another um, pair of my Arnie and Carlos socks. Um, you might remember that I am trying to knit my way through them. I think I do have a skein of every color of the Arnie and Carlos, the first line. Um, the second line was quite different, but I really liked this line and my local yarn store was having them for half off. So I think I got two skeins of each. That was before I, I was knitting with um, different colored toes, heels and cuffs. So I can actually get 
one pair of socks out of 50 grams. So I have enough for two, two pairs of socks. So I think this is my third pair. So I have a couple more to knit up. But I do love how the Regia Arnie and Carlos wears. Um, it seems to be more hardy. I don't find them scratchy at all, but I do like hardier yarns because I'm hard on my socks. Um, yeah, so those are my next FO. So those are the FOs that I have to show you, but I do also have a few whips. I'm just gonna grab a little sip of tea before I continue. All right, so you may remember from the last podcast that I am trying to finish up all of the whips that I have before the end of the year. Now, that's knitting whips. Um, so I only have one more knitting whip before I'm finished my knitting whips, but I also have a crochet whip. And I'm just gonna show you really quickly my knitting one and then we'll talk about the crochet. So this one, I haven't done a darn thing on since the last podcast, but I'll show it to you really quickly anyway. Um, you might remember these are called the Tiet Downton Socks by Kay Jones. And that is my progress that I've had since I started them. <laughs> it's a lovely um, lacy design, very Downton. Um, and I'm using yarn that I had frogged from a, uh, a shawl that I had knit. It was a long skinny shawl and I didn't wear it anymore and I just thought this was a really nice downton color. It matched the, the pattern perfectly. So that's what I'm knitting them out of. And then this is a leftover, I think it's Cascade Heritage, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm using that for the toes, heels and cuffs. So this is what I'm gonna be kind of working on for the next a little while so I can hopefully get this pair done. This is my first sock so I still have another one to go after this as well. Um, this one does take some thought because I am following uh, a repeat and it's quite a long repeat so I've got to look every line to see what I'm doing. But I, fit, I figured that if I can get a repeat done every night um, I should be able to have these done pretty soon. So that's my knitting whip that I need to finish before I can cast on anything else. Uh, I do also have a crochet whip. Now this is probably, probably my biggest whip that I have left to finish and I'm nearing the end, I'm getting closer. So I, I really wanna concentrate on it and just get it done. So, it is my crocheted blanket that I started. I had two crochet blankets on the go. One I finished in the summer, and this is my only other one that I have that's active. So this, you might remember, um, I, am, I love the look of the moss and linen stitch in crochet, and I just decided to cast on so many stitches and knit a blanket. And I'm using leftovers that I have um, I have a big basket of leftovers, DK and worsted, and I'm just randomly picking and putting colors in. So that's kind of what's happening, and I will sit back a little bit to show you. I'm kind of mid-row right now, so I have to be careful about where I am. Okay, so that's where I am. So this is how much I've got done. This is how wide it is, pretty much as wide as the screen. And here we go. I don't know if you can see the bottom of that or not. So it's a good size right now for a lap blanket. Um, I would really preferably like it to cover right down to my feet. So I've maybe got, I'm gonna say, If I did this much more from my finger to my finger, I would have, I would be finished. Um, and then I just have to add a board around it. This is a, I'm crocheting my ends in as I go. 
the dog wants out. <clears throat> so this blanket, I am crocheting my ends in as I go. Um, I still have some little pieces to, to clip off there, but basically you get to the end and you just crochet that end right in as you go. So it's not a very straight edge. At some points it does pucker in just because of the different yarns that I'm using. So I'm kind of wondering what I'm going to do for an edge. Um, I want something pretty simple, I think. Uh, but I haven't decided yet. If you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them. Um, because I'm hoping to finish this in the next couple of weeks. That's the plan anyway. Um, I did. I had left it down for a long time and I, I picked it back up again. Where's my... I have a stitch marker. So this is my stitch marker here. This is actually a stitch marker from um, Cedar River Knits. Let's see if I can get it without, there we go. A little sheepy. Um, this is how much I've done since I picked it back up. But I was finding it was going really slowly and I was wondering, I'm sure this went faster last time I was crocheting. And then I noticed that some parts were really like loose and see-through, like down here is very tight. Um, and I was getting all these really loose stitches and it didn't matter my tension, like I was doing the tension right. So I decided to look it up and I looked up on YouTube how to do the stitch again. And I realized I was doing an extra, I think I was doing an extra loop. So I, when I started the black line here again, I reverted back and now it's it's a lot closer than it was but I do have this section right kind of right here where it's a little looser than the rest but I'm not too worried it's just a blanket out of scraps and I'm just gonna keep going so hopefully I can get that finished very soon because I have all kinds of ideas of other things I want to make and this is just kind of weighing me down. I, it's been hanging out in the living room in the basket and I just need to get it done. So those are my whips that I've been working on. Um, I haven't been working on any um, quilting in the last little bit. I, I was planning on getting my quilt finished and I was working quite diligently on it, but then it kind of got put to the wayside. Um, it's easier to pull out knitting and crochet when the kids are around. Um, with the, the quilting, I have to kind of think about what I'm doing and if I'm cutting things, they have to be precise. Um, so probably over the Christmas holidays, I will finish my Sequoia quilt for sure. Um, other than that, I think I have a couple of yarn haul things and I will show those to you as well. All right, I have been very good this year about not buying yarn. I've been using all of my stash. And as you can see from all of my socks that I've been knitting, I have been putting a big dent in my sock knitting stash, which is good. I did, however, pick up a few sock yarns um, in the last couple of weeks. You can blame Amy Florence for this next uh, stash haul. She had posted about her festive sock along. She does it every year. Um, she knits a box. She has a box that she's trying to fill of 25 pairs of Christmas socks. And when she was showing some of the ones that she had in her box, I fell in love with a few colors from West Yorkshire Spinners. This is a yarn that I've wanted to try for um, quite a few years and it's from England so it wasn't really readily available to me here but Yarn Canada does sell it and so I thought it was the perfect time just to grab a couple and I think this is going to be kind of like the Arnie and Carlos um, yarn. It's going to be hard wearing and I'm not going to have any issues with it. So West Yorkshire Signature 4 Ply. Um, this is in the Hollyberry colorway. And this is one of the ones that she showed. I think I'm gonna pair it with a red and red heels, toes, and cuffs. I think that'll make a really cute Christmassy pair. And I, this is 100 grams, so I will have enough to make probably two pairs of socks so I could even go green 
on the other way um, as well if I have some green. So that's Holly Berry. The other one that I picked up, you all know if you've been here for a while that my favorite bird is the British Robin. This is their Robin colorway. Um, they actually started the sock yarn line with uh, a whole line of bird colorways. So all the British birds kind of had their own colorway. And this one just had to come home with me. So that's the Robin colorway and the Hollyberry colorway. And those were my two West Yorkshire Spinners purchases. I have one more purchase to show you. Uh, you may have heard, if you watch many podcasts and you know about the Fruity Knitting Podcast, that uh, Andrew from the Fruity Knitting Podcast is quite ill right now. There have been a lot of uh, yarn dyers out there that are trying to help with their medical costs and are dyeing colorways with the proceeds going straight to Fruity Knitting. So Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit is a um, someone I follow on Instagram, love her colorways and her yarns. And when I saw that she was coming out with an Andrew and Andrea colorway, I knew that I had to purchase one. So this is Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit's Andrew and Andrea, the Fruity Knitting Yarn. So if you have watched the Fruity Knitting Podcast, you know that Andrew wears quite a lot of blue. So there's blue with blue speckles in there. Andrea has this, I don't know if you can tell in the speckles down here, but they have their brownish, reddish speckles down here, just like Andrea's hair. And this color can be seen in the background a lot of the time in their fruit bowl. So I just thought that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit really nailed the colorway and I loved it. So that came across the pond. This is a, a 75-25. Now, one lonely skein could not come across the pond by itself. So I had been admiring uh, her Paris in spring colorway. Now, I don't know if this is gonna show up very well on the screen, it might today. I've tried to record this podcast, I think four times now, and I haven't had great light because it's been after work. Um, so this one hasn't shown up very well, but let me see. You can kind of see it. It's a very soft, delicate color. There's peaches, there's a light blue, like a robin's egg blue. There are some brown speckles. And the, the great thing I love about um, Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit is on Instagram, they post a picture beside the skein of um, their inspiration. And I just love this one. It was, the colors were so pretty. So those are the two skeins that came to my house. She also included a beautiful little progress keeper from Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit. And a lovely little lavender sachet. Mm -mm. So that's gonna live in my stash as well. So that is everything I have to show you. Um, I know it was a quick podcast today. I don't have any book reviews for right now. I'm, I'm trying to keep it short, but I did wanna tell you that I'm going to be having, um, I'm gonna be posting my first floss tube video very soon. I have um, recently picked up a cross stitch that I've been trying to finish for years. I've been watching lots of floss tubes and I've been inspired um, to get my cross stitches back out. So I have, I'll be having some new projects um, as well as some old projects to show you and that video will be coming up soon. So the idea is that I'll have maybe shorter um, podcasts so that they aren't so long and I know that I have a lot of um, different crafts to show you but if I keep them maybe the floss tube separate from the knitting, crochet and quilting, it won't make my podcasts giant um, and more manageable for you. I know that I like when I have like a 30 minute podcast to watch and I could just do it if I'm getting dinner ready or whatever I'm doing. If I have a two hour podcast, it takes me several um, nights to get through it, but at the 30 minute ones, they go by quickly. So that's the idea. I hope you enjoyed my knitting content. Next knitting podcast, I will have some new starts for you. 
um, to show you what I've been up to and a floss tube hopefully soon. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed uh, the podcast, don't forget to like or subscribe um, so that you can catch up on the next videos. And like I said, a new floss tube video, floss tube number one, will be coming shortly. Thanks so much and have a happy and safe weekend. Bye.